Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us, coming to you from Washington's premier indoor shooting facility. Of course, that's Security Gun Club right here in Woodenville, Washington. Hey, Minnesota, what the hell are you thinking? Yes, tis the season. It seems that there are all sorts of state legislators who are just trying to get their assault weapon bans in at the last minute before the United States Supreme Court absolutely rejects them next summer. But there has been various different ways that states have gone about implementing this form of civilian disarmament. Now, there are several models. We'll get you educated. But I got to tell you, Minnesota, you have picked the most evil, most nefarious model out there. And it's a little bit disturbing. So today, let's spend a few minutes, let's go through the bill, and let's talk about Minnesota adopts the Illinois model for assault weapon bans. Okay, so what we're talking about today is Minnesota HF3628. Now, Minnesota, we have not had a chance to geek out a whole lot in the past. So let me explain a couple things. The only way that a state like Minnesota ends up on a channel called Washington Gun Law is either A, you do something so awesome to protect the inalienable rights of your citizens that we feel the need to give you a big old attaboy. That is not what is happening today. Or the other way is you do something so nefarious, so sinister, so evil to your citizens that we feel the need to inform the rest of the country as to the lunacy that is occurring in your state. That is what we're gonna talk about today because HF3628, like many other states, is Minnesota's attempt to try to get their assault weapon ban in before the United States Supreme Court smacks them all down. There has been numerous ways in which states have gone about in their civilian disarmament efforts to ban these types of weapons. Now, I know when I use the term assault weapon, some of you are freaking out right now. Don't ever call them again. I get that. Okay. But I'm using that term because that's what's in the bill. Okay. And even though you may say there's no such thing as assault weapon, if this bill becomes law, there will be in Minnesota and they will all be banned. Now, I also said that there are several different models for how we can go about doing this. California model was implemented by Washington State, so I had that shoved down our throats out here last summer. There are various other models. The model that you do not want to adopt, and all of these are unconstitutional, all of these are absolutely evil to the citizens, but the absolute worst model to adopt, by far, and we spent many, many, many videos talking about it, is the Illinois model. Now, even though Illinois passed this thing in less than 72 hours by taking an innocuous piece of insurance legislation, turning it into a full right assault weapon ban, having no public comment, and having the governor sign it with an emergency effective date on it, that's not what you're going to be dealing with here. No, this is actually just a regular piece of legislation that will kick through the legislative process. But is that not only does this bill ban the future sales of all of these banned firearms, it bans the possession of them also. That's right. Let me say that again. It bans the possession of them also. So, for example, in Washington State, when we got our assault weapon ban shoved down our throat last summer in House Bill 1240, it banned the sale, offer for sale, manufacture, assembly, or importation of an assault weapon. It did not ban the possession, and that's how our grandfathering clause works. So you sit there and you go, oh my God, are you telling me that there's not going to be any grandfathering clause in this bill? No, there is. But just like Illinois, you only get to keep your firearm if you register it. Let me say that again. You only get to keep your firearm if you register it with the state. Uh, apparently, your state legislature has never read the Firearm Owners Protection Act of 1986. They are unfamiliar with the fact that no federal or state resource can be used in any way, shape, or form to create a gun registry. But hey, why let the law get in the way of civilian disarmament? Now, Minnesota, just so you understand how your state will define a scary and now unlawful assault weapon, they use very similar language to what we see in Washington and California, which is called the single feature test. That is, we're going to define a platform of firearm, and then if it includes a single feature on this ban list, that makes it a scary assault weapon. And of course, those features are things that we normally find on those platforms of firearms. The bill's language actually reads, Semi-automatic military-style assault weapon also includes any 
One semi-automatic rifle that has the capacity to accept a detachable magazine and has one or more of the following. All right, semi-automatic rifle, not semi-automatic center fire rifle. Semi-automatic rifle has any one of these features. One, a pistol grip or thumb hole stock. Two, any feature capable of functioning as a protruding grip that can be held by the non-trigger hand. Three, a folding or telescoping stock. Or four, a shroud attached to the barrel or that partially or completely encircles the barrel, allowing the bearer to hold the firearm with the non-trigger hand without being burned, but excluding a slide that encloses the barrel. And I should point out that I just did this video about proposed legislation in Colorado, and this is verbatim cut and pasted from that bill. Now, I also said, hey, listen, it's a lot more than rifles. It is. It includes some pistols, too. These ones. Two, a semi-automatic pistol or any semi-automatic center fire or rim fire rifle with a fixed magazine that has the capacity to accept more than 10 rounds of ammunition. Three, a semi-automatic pistol that has the capacity to accept a detachable magazine and has one or more of the following. So this is a semi-automatic pistol that accepts a detachable magazine anywhere on the firearm. Most states actually exclude and says a detachable magazine in some place other than the grip. This includes any detachable magazine and if it has any one of these following, this too constitutes a scary assault weapon. One, any feature capable of functioning as a protruding grip that can be held by the non-trigger hand. Two, a folding, telescoping, or thumb hole stock. Three, a shroud attached to the barrel that partially or completely encircles the barrel, allowing the bearer to hold the firearm with the non-trigger hand without being burned, but excluding a slide that encloses a barrel. Or four, the capacity to accept a detachable magazine at any location outside of the pistol grip. So immediately your AR pistols, your AK pistols, any of that immediately ruled unlawful. Oh, but wait, Minnesota, there's more because some shotguns would also fall under this legislation. Those include a semi-automatic shotgun that has one or more of the following. One, a pistol grip or thumb hole stock. Two, any feature capable of functioning as a protruding grip that can be held by the non-trigger hand. Three, a folding or telescoping stock. Four, a fixed magazine capacity in excess of 10 rounds. Or five, an ability to accept a detachable magazine. And any shotgun with a revolving cylinder or anything like that would also be deemed unlawful. All of those firearms would constitute now banned assault weapons under this Minnesota legislation. The enactment date, and this is important, Minnesota, the enactment date if this bill becomes law is August 1st of 2024. So I'm gonna tell all of you, and this is free legal advice, the same thing that I just told all the folks in Colorado yesterday, which was exactly the same thing that I was telling all the good folks out here in Washington exactly one year ago, and it's this, stock up now. Stock up right now. Now, I mentioned that the big concern here is that this statute actually prohibits the ownership and possession of it. The prohibited language, if this becomes law, would read as follows. It is unlawful for a person to manufacture, import, transfer, own or possess large capacity magazines, 50 caliber or larger firearms, semi-automatic military style assault weapons or undetectable firearms. And that is really unique because the prohibition against ownership or possession was never even offered in the original California legislation, was not offered in the Washington legislation, and yet for whatever reason, the state of Minnesota believes that they need to now implement the Illinois model, which is, hey, we're gonna ban the ownership of this unless you register these firearms with our state. Don't believe me, this is how the bill reads. A person who legally owned or possessed a large capacity magazine, 50 caliber or larger firearm, or semi-automatic military style assault weapon before January 1st, 2024, and who desires to keep ownership or possession of the device shall register it before January 1st, 2025 with the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension and provide notice of the registration to the person's local law enforcement agency. And then of course the legislation says, or you could just surrender the firearm, the magazine or the device that is now prohibited to local law enforcement. Now on the scale of things that we kind of monitor here at Washington Gun Law, and we monitor a lot of terrible, terrible legislation. This is in fact one of the worst assault weapon bans that we've seen. Is it the worst? No, Illinois is always gonna have everybody beat on that one. But this is a real close second. And it's a real close second because in addition to doing the obvious, which is banning thousands and thousands of lawful firearms, 
This legislation says that the only way that you will get to exercise an inalienable right is you must register these items with your state police, which is in direct violation of the Firearm Owners Protection Act of 1986. Now, what is the likelihood that this legislation actually comes to fruition? Well, there is a Democratic trifecta going on right now, which means they control the House, they control the Senate, and they control the governor's mansion. However, the margins are not particularly large at the legislative level. The Senate right now, there is a one vote uh, majority for the Democrats at 34 to 33. In the House, it's slightly larger. There are 70 Democrats, 63 Republicans. Now, that would require every single Democrat hold absolutely firm on this. I don't know the makeup of all of these individuals in your state legislature, but obviously you guys need to start carefully, carefully watching HF3628. You also need to sign up for the Minnesota Gun Owners Caucus. We're going to put the links for them down below. You should be following them on Twitter right now. That's their Twitter handle right there. And listen, we're going to put the links down below because Minnesota, you need to show them a little love. They're going to need a lot of resources because they are gearing up for a huge, huge battle this legislative session. If you guys got any other questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you should know how to get a hold of Washington Gun Law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information is also down there in the description box. And then finally, let's everyone remember that part of being a lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about here all the time, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.